Okay. Um, tonight, um, we're going to be picking back up uh, with Second Kings on the last uh, that we talked, which was about two uh, Tuesday evenings ago. We were in the, near the end of the 23rd chapter or in the 23rd chapter. And I said that um, we would probably go into the 24th chapter. Um, we will be there a little bit tonight, but we're we're not per se just going to totally uh, be there. So what I want to do is I want to go ahead and pray because I want to go ahead and, and go into the scriptures for our lesson on this evening. We thank you again, Father, for this opportunity to come and look into your holy and righteous word. You've told us that we are to, um, to be in it. It is to be in us. And I'm asking you, dear Lord, that you will help us to do just that, be in it so that it can be in us. Your spirit of truth, spirit of truth that will keep us, guide us, correct us, whatever needs to be done. I'm asking that you help us to um, to remain faithful. You're faithful whether we are or not. You show us the things that's going on in this world. You've shown us things from time past. You show us things to come. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. Uh, I don't want to say anything, Lord, that is is not of you. Um, we need you in, in seeking truth. The world needs you. Help us, dear Lord, to be doers of your word, not hearers only. I ask these things in your son Jesus' name. So as I've already said, we're going to be in Second Kings. We are pretty much, we are near the end of uh, Second Kings. There's 25 uh, chapters. Um, I'm wanting to cover a nice bit of it, but I'm just going to say we're going to be in the Word. So um, I'm, I'm not going to necessarily try to tie myself into it because I see some things that I think are pertinent um, um, for for us to either, to be either be reminded of or to learn. So let's let's delve into the Word of God. Let me go ahead and give you my title. I I, I want to do that this time. My title is "You Can Be Led Away." Okay, you can be led away. You might put a semicolon and put "taken captive." As I'm gonna say it all together, you can be led away, taken captive. So I was reminded when I was studying on this. Uh, uh, even for this particular lesson, I was like, wow, it's like, let me, let's go way, way, way back to the beginning of things in Genesis. And I was thinking about uh, the first man, the one whom God had blessed, son of God being Adam. And Adam had everything. Adam had the, the word of God. He, you might say some that he was in paradise, the garden of Eden. Uh, couldn't want for Anything else you might say, he had Yahweh, God Almighty, but he he he, uh, he forfeited what he had. You say, well, Gary, he didn't totally forfeit it. He forfeited life. So I want, I want us to understand that he he forfeited life because he had God. He had communion with God, and the thing that happened is, um, some you say, well, he you can say he blamed that on his his wife. But it, let's understand that he really had an understanding. He did not have to, but he chose to say, well, Gary, how does that even connect to the lesson or the text on tonight? I said, we're going to be in the word of God. That which he had, he lost it and was kicked out. So by his, his desire to just do what he wanted to do, he was taken captive. Was he not? He actually was. And he was kicked out. He was carried away by what he wanted to do. Well, how will that go into tonight? How about I just go ahead and kind of tell you, Lord willing, we get to the 14th and the 15th verse of the 24th chapter. We're going to see the reiteration or the repetition of the action being carried away. Well, let's go ahead and, and, and have us a little recap from where we were about two weeks ago if you remember anything josiah was a very very godly king he did some reforms restoration in the temple of god tearing down high places killing the false prophets and stuff gary that sounds so mean 
were they not killing the people of God with their doctrine? Yes, they were. Now, when I say that, let's understand something. It was in God's word what they were supposed to do. Well, I'm going to look uh, at a few verses from where we were. I, I'd like my pace, at least in the start, to be kind of uh, a little a, a, a little quick. Um, but let's 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 move on into the word. I want to look at uh, verses, uh, let's say, 31, uh, 30 of uh, chapter 23 of Second King. Josiah, has, he's been killed. He's been killed by some men in the Egyptian army because he chose not to listen to Pharaoh Nico. Nico told him to Josiah, I have no business with you. I'm, I'm, I've heard from the Lord. Josiah is going out to fight anyway, and uh, he loses his life. And out of all that he did, I'm not saying that he was damned, but he lost he lost his life. Now I'm going to this uh, 30th verse here of 2 Kings 23rd chapter. And I'm going to read down a little bit, so bear with me, because this is a part of the review. And his servants carried him in a chariot, dead from Megiddo, and brought him to Jerusalem and buried him in his own sepulcher. And the people of the land took Jehoah, Jehoah Jehoahaz, the son of Josiah, and anointed him and made him king in his father's stead. So we're going to have a series of kings after the death of Josiah, that last great king, wonderful king. We're going to see about, I want to say, four, three or four kings here. These kings are going to be wicked. Descendants of Josiah, but they're going to be wicked. So let's just see who who is who is this Jehoahaz? Well, Jehoahaz was the son of uh of Josiah. If you want to see some of the other children that Josiah had, you can turn to I believe it is first Chronicles third chapter and about the fifteenth verse. I'm not going to turn there, but you can go and look at it if you want to. Back to this thirty first verse. Jehoahaz was twenty and three years old when he to reign and he reigned three months in Jerusalem and his mother's name was Hamutal, uh, the daughter of Jeremiah of Libna. He did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord according to all that his fathers had done. A descendant and he chose to be wicked. Listen to what happens to him. Pharaoh Necho is going to deal with him. And Pharaoh Necho put him in bands at at Ribla in the land of Hamath that he might not reign in Jerusalem and put the land to tribute of a hundred talents of silver and talents of gold. We have a, a changing, if you will, political, social, religious, educational, whatever it's let's call it psychological, whatever you want to call it. But um, the, the sad thing is is that these kings were allowing for many of uh, of these various changes. We may look at some of that tonight, speaking a little fast now, because it's still in the recap. Veronica is going to take Jehoahaz. He's going to, he's going to take him to Egypt. And this is where Jehoahaz is going to die. Listen at it. Um, and Pharaoh Nico put him in bands at Ribla. This is the 33rd verse in the land of Hamath, that he might not reign in Jerusalem. Just ruling here and put him, put the land to tribute. Now the people of God are in bondage again. Listen to this. The people of God are in bondage in the land that God had gave him. Does this, you know what the Bible says, these things ought not so to be. Shouldn't happen. How are you going to be in bondage when the land is, when, when God has set you free? It's because you choose to go back. Well, 24th first. And Pharaoh Necho made Eliakim, the son of Josiah. I'm sorry. 34th first. Thank you. My wife, she said, I'm at, I'm at the 34th first, not the 24th first. That's good. And Pharaoh Necho made Eliakim, the son of Josiah, the king. Uh, in his in the room of Josiah, his father, and turned his name to Jehoiakim and took Jehoahaz away and he came to Egypt and he died there. We have another king here. The tribute is being paid. 
and with Jehoiakim, whose name has been changed. Listen, when you begin to be led away and the sin has overtaken you because you thought you could handle it, be carried away, your name will be changed. Your character will be changed. You, 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 you're in bondage. You're in bondage. You're not free to do as the will of God says. I'm just reminded of Romans, the eighth chapter, and about the fifth and the sixth verse. Can I do that? You say, Gary, it's not at this time frame. Let's understand something about the word of God. Can we do it? I believe we can. He always wanted man's heart. His obedience, his mind, his allegiance, his affection, his obedience. I keep saying obedience. And so when I say obedience, that means he had given him instruction. The instruction was to teach. The instruction was to grow you up. The instruction was to take you from being that little child that he took when you were a baby, grow you up so that you could be mature and follow on unto righteousness, becoming stronger and stronger and stronger to help other persons. Don't you see it in Deuteronomy 4? You should see it in Deuteronomy 4. Yes, this was and is the will of God for people of old and people right now. It's like um, God was looking for the heart of man. Yes, it was. Listen at this. And Jehoiakim gave the silver and the gold to Pharaoh, but taxed the land to give the money according to the commandment of the Pharaoh. You say, Gary, are you going to teach it again? Well, it may sound like it, but I'm pretty much just about done with the recap. When... um. Eliakim becomes Jehoiakim. I hope I'm saying his name right. Yeah, Jehoiakim. His name is changed. And he is he has to do what this nep what what this uh uh I'm thinking now because that's where we're gonna be going soon. What this Pharaoh is telling him to do. But listen to how what he does to the people to pay the Pharaoh. He takes from the people to pay the Pharaoh in a land that God had given him. They're now taking captive there in a sense, taking bondage there in a sense, because you did not surrender to the will of God. So now you pay. You're paying because you didn't want to pay attention in the beginning. So you gave a little. Now you're going to give a lot. You're going to give a lot. So uh, he takes from the people. And then it goes on and reads a little bit more. I'm looking now at the 36 and 37 verse. Jehoiakim was 20 and 5 years old when he began to reign. And he reigned 11 years in Jerusalem. This reigning is not reigning under the, the auspices or the uh, how can I say, the direction of God. God is, you know, in Romans where it says, and he gave them over to a reprobate mind. God has given, first he's given Israel over to Israel, doesn't exist anymore as a as a northern kingdom. Judah's about to be given over. Can you understand what I'm saying? Judah is about to be given over. We got people coming in, taking over. You in your own land, but you're paying, you're paying, you're vassal. You're not, you, you didn't show allegiance to God. He's now going to let you give or you don't want to give anymore. I'm talking about the kings here. So he talks about his mother's name was um, Zebedah, the daughter of Pediah uh, of Ramah. And it says of this, this Jehoiakim, he said it did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his fathers had done. You know, we're going to be talking about um, Nebuchadnezzar here in just a few seconds. And I think we're very familiar with who Nebuchadnezzar was. We'll think about the book of Daniel. But as we go through and look at these verses, um, I mean, I, I think what we're going to find in this 24th chapter is a, 
much of a narrative, but I want to pull from Jeremiah a lot. That's actually the book that I'm thinking of really going to after we complete the Kings. Say, well, if you're going to do that, why do you want to go to it? Because it is there. I think it helped us to understand the time that we're focusing on. So let's look at this right here. We're going to pull maybe even a little bit from Habakkuk tonight. There are several prophets that were contemporaries one of another. In other words, they were living in a time where all of this wickedness was going on and it's culminated. Manasseh just Manasseh made God so mad. He, he, but there it was stuff that was building up to all of this. Let's go to this 24th chapter and look at this first verse we want to read on down so when we get to maybe i'm thinking about maybe the 15th chapter if we don't we don't because there are some other passages of scripture that i do want to look at tonight listen at this in his days nebuchadnezzar king of babylon came up and jehoiakim became his servant three years um then he turned and rebelled against him and the lord sent i want you to hear that when I say I want you to hear that, that that's for the hearer. That's for me. That's for you. That's for anybody who would listen, learn the word of God. Let me tell you something else. It's for the one who will not. It is for the one who would hear not. I'm reminded of Revelation. It said, let who, him who has an ear hear what the spirit says to the church. Nebuchadnezzar is coming on the scene. So we have the change from the people of God, kings in Judah who were supposed to be trusting God. That's your Hebrew nation. We see the Hebrew nation because they would not be obedient. They lose that which God had given to them. So then we see that the Egyptians were back on the scene. Now, how was it the Egyptians were on the scene when they came out of the land of bondage? Because the people of God continued to disobey. So the Egyptians got a little bit of power. Do you remember the Assyrians had a little bit of power? Do you remember the Philistines had a little bit of power? But the people of God would not be victorious in God. That's the key. In God. When I was praying, uh, it's like we want your word in us and us to be in your word. That's our protection. That's our wisdom. That's our strength. That's our correction. The word, the word, the word of God. God is his word. Let me go back to the second verse. And the Lord, I said, I said let me go back. Um, yeah, let's go there. And the Lord sent against him because because he wanted to rebel now. Listen, the king of Judah wanted to get rebel against Nebuchadnezzar. Now, Nebuchadnezzar was, uh, the, I'm going to call him the king of Babylon. He had a powerful father. I think it was Neb Nebuchadnezzar. I might be saying his name wrong. He had established Babylon and Babylon was on the rise. Babylon is now over Egypt. Can you understand what I'm saying? The Hebrew people to the Egyptians. And now Babylon is, Babylon is the power. He's coming from the east. He's coming to the west. And he's going to take what was Assyria. He's going to take what was Syria. He's going to take the Palestine. It's the Palestinian people or the Hebrews and he's going to be over Egypt. Look at what you forfeited. You're going to be taken captive because you can be. Can be. And God is allowing some things. Listen to how this read. I, I hope it's making sense. If it's not, then maybe we just go back and read it one time and say, oh, okay. Listen, and the Lord sent against him bands of the Chaldees and bands of the Syrians and bands of the Moabites and bands of the children of Ammon and sent them against Judah. Why? To destroy it according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by his servants, the prophets. I just, I was reading this. It, it, it stuck out more to me this time than the last three, four. I don't know five times that I was reading it in the past few weeks. I was like, God's like, he's like, I'm sending him now. You carried favor. And then maybe that's not the way I said it. You flirted, you flirted with 
their gods. You flirted with their way of living. I told you not to burn your children. I told you not to go up into the groves. I told, I told you what to do. I told you what to do. And you didn't do it. You kept doing these things. Now you've, you've got to suffer. Listen at this. The Lord sent against him. Okay. I want to go back to the first verse a little bit. Uh, we looked at the king who was serving, and Je Jehoiakim became his servant. He's the servant of Nebuchadnezzar, and now he wants to rebel against Nebuchadnezzar. God said, "This is this is in any other time had he been under God's uh, uh, how can I say in God's will in God's favor, rebel against him because now you got the Lord fighting for you, but now you out there by yourself, little boy." See when we when we go through the scripture, we want to show the scripture like it is. So I'm 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 not trying to please anyone who wants this to sound um, uh, like a fairy tale. This is not a fairy tale. This is the word of God, and this is what we have in the wonderful righteous word of God. You've got different enemy nations that surround in Palestine. We've looked at it. We've talked about the Moabites and the Ammonites and the Edomites. The, don't see Edomites here. But what are we seeing? Utter chaos. Utter, utter, uh, uh, how can I say, turmoil. Imagine they're fearful now. Imagine the main, the main power, Nebuchadnezzar, and then you got all these other powers messing with you. I think I was reading it in one version. It's like rioters coming up in there. Oh, the unrest. The unrest when God was their protection. But let's go back to the part where it says this. And sent them against Judah to destroy it, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by his servants, the prophets. So I ask myself, I said, self, who might these prophets be? And I said to myself, self, what have you seen in the word of God? Well, we've seen in the word of God before they ever began before they ever got to the what we call promised land that God had used Moses to talk to them. Didn't he do it? Yes, he did. But then I got to thinking, I said, well, I said, I might be going to the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah is a prophet around this time. Ezekiel will be a prophet. So sometimes we might not see him mentioned in this book, but we want to understand that they're prophets. So I've turned to Jeremiah just a little bit uh, in the past, but I'm I'm going to do it again. <laughs> I'll do it again. I want us to look. I thought I had marked it off. Jeremiah, uh, the first chapter. I want us to look at the third verse, and I want us to look at the 18th verse of Jeremiah, the third chapter. I mean, not the third chapter, but the first verse. The first, let me get it right. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 3, verse 18. Listen at how this reads right here. Third verse. And it came to pass in the days of Jehoiakim, who we've been looking at Jehoiakim, how he wants to rebel, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, until the end of the 11th year of Zedekiah. So we're looking at these the series of kings that I said were going to be wicked. Okay. The son of Josiah, king of Judah, unto the carrying away of Jerusalem captive in the fifth month. So I just, just want to validate again that Jeremiah is probably one of these prophets. Let's look at the 18th verse. Let's go to the 17th and the 18th verse. God speaks to his prophets here, and he's telling them, I need you to be a certain way. Listen, listen, listen at this. Thou therefore, Jeremiah, gird up thy loins and arise and speak unto them all that I command thee. Be not dismayed at their faces, lest I confound thee before them. I can make you look confused. I can make you, you know, be as though you, you, you didn't know what you was talking about from me. Listen to the 18th verse. For behold, being a Jeremiah, I have made thee this day a defensed city. What? 
But y'all, we look <laughs> we're looking at Jerusalem, which was a defense city. They are falling. Jerusalem, you are falling. You got these nations coming up against you. You got Nebuchadnezzar, big power for Nebuchadnezzar. We're gonna look at what Habakkuk says about uh Babylon. I want us to see it in a few minutes. And so you you in a nation that looked like they weak, but I'm strong, but you talk to the people anyway. Listen, 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 listen. For behold, I may be this dead defense city, an iron pillar and brazen wall against the whole land, against the kings of Judah, against the princes thereof, against the priests thereof, and against the people of the land. What a task. We said, Jeremiah, I'm going to give you the ability to do it. I'm looking at this one man with the spirit of God as a defense sit and he said you got to talk to the king now who are the kings that we've been talking about josiah was good manasseh wicked 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 repented but wicked then ammon wicked 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 and then josiah comes on to do, do a good job but god had told the prophet hold to tell them i'm gonna get you take, let me see if i can take the squeak out of my voice <clears throat> i'm gonna get you Go back and read 2 Kings 21. Go back and read. This Manasseh was depraved, vile, base, abominable. You see what I'm saying? But he repented. He did repent. God, the scriptures show that he repented. When Josiah comes on the scene, he does a wonderful thing. And uh, anyway, what's my point? Josiah was, not Josiah, uh, Jeremiah was living during this time let's go back to where we were okay follow me jehoiakim under the babylonian dominion he wants to rebel now some think he wanted to uh uh well i, I was reading some i think in josephus i start getting confused if i don't i don't always mark down what i read but some believe that um the egyptians had encouraged uh uh jehoiakim to rebel against um the Babylon. I think there are several instances, so I won't go into some details about some of the political uh, uh, situations that happened maybe during or prior to this time, because we want to look at what's going on right here. God's um, rewarding the people for their conduct. Well, uh, the nations are there, but God had spoken to the people by the prophets. Listen at verse three. Can we go back to 24, second King? I was like, Listen to how the author of this says, surely these nations coming against, surely it sounds like without a doubt, surely at the commandment of the Lord came this upon Judah to remove them out of the sight for the sins of Manasseh, according to all that he did. It says, surely, surely. I was thinking about that. I was like, wow. At the commandment of the Lord. Out of the sight. Out of the sight. Now, you remember when I was reading before and I was talking about in the sight? I said, well, was a reason because I knew I was coming to this verse. So Habakkuk, I'm, I'm going to turn there. I told we're going to be in the scriptures. This Babylonian nation is coming up against the people of God. They were powerful. Habakkuk was one of the prophets during the time of some of all of this wicked, that sounds funny, some of all, uh, of this wickedness that would um, take place. Do you mind if I cut away into Habakkuk? Well, I want to read about, I think I, will, I, I think about seven, uh, about seven verses. Habakkuk, if, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, Habakkuk is a prophet and he doesn't understand in a sense how God is going to allow, it seems, the judgment to persist. You see, remember, we just read that God is, uh, how can I say, allowing these other nations to come on. And Habakkuk, a prophet of God, knowing God is righteous, knowing God is wonderful, knowing God promises that, you know, you made to Abraham, you made to David, you, you reaffirm with uh, uh, Solomon and all this. It's like, how, it's almost like, how are you going to let this keep happening? So I want to cut away into it because we're going to be reading about the Babylonians here in a second. I'm going to go to the sixth verse, Habakkuk 1. I do want to read to about the 13th verse. All right. 
Listen to this. For lo, I have raised up the Chaldeans. Chaldeans uh, is another term sometimes that the scriptures will give us to know are the people of Babylon. Okay. Now, for lo, I have raised up the Chaldeans, that bitter, hasty nation, which shall march through the breadth of the land. What land? The land that was the people of God to possess the dwelling places that are not theirs. Chaldea is coming to take over. Do you see what I'm saying? They are a terrible and a dread and a dreadful. It's a hard read. <laughs> I think I just in, in, in put nations in my mind. They are okay. They are terrible and dreadful. Their judgment, their dignity shall pre pre precede themselves. If you want to pick up and read for this, you read for me, you can. Their dignity shall, pro shall proceed of themselves. Their horses also are swifter than the leopards and are more fierce than the evening wolves. And their horsemen shall spread themselves and their horsemen shall come from afar. They shall fly as the eagle that hasteth to eat. Keep reading, please. They shall come all for violence. Their faces shall sup up as the east wind, and they shall gather the captivity as the same. Hold up. Thank you. This is what Jehoiakim is trying to rebel against. <laughs> it is not funny. Hey, why'd you laugh? Sometimes when I'm going through the scripture, just things just make me chuckle. There is nothing nice about what we're hearing about this Babylonian nation. Nothing sounds nice, but that's what's coming. The terrible, dreadful people. The idea of what we imagine, are like, let's say a thousand horses just running. Can you see? It would probably feel like the earth is, is trembling. You can hear them coming and everything faster than a leopard. The men riding the horses is what we ought to think of as well. What do they have? Do they have spears? Do they have bows? Do they have what, what, what's happening? You take it captive. Ninth verse, they shall come all for violence. Their faces shall sup up the east wind and they shall gather the captivity as the sand. Who's the captivity? People of God, those who were once named as the people of God. And they shall scoff at the kings and the princes shall be shall be a scorn unto them. They shall deride every stronghold. They shall shall heap dust they shall take it just a few more verses right here maybe a couple then shall his mind change and he shall pass over and offend imputing this his power unto his god listen okay um i want us to read, one, read verses 12 and 13 for me art thou not from everlasting O yahweh my god you hear habakkuk communing with with the lord read Mine holy one, we shall not die. O Yahweh, thou hast ordained them for judgment. Did you hear that? Read, read. And Almighty God, thou hast established them for correction. Stop. There's, there's, it's almost like when you can say two sides to this. These people have been, these people have been judged. Habakkuk knows the righteousness of God. Habakkuk knows the promises of God. Habakkuk knows God's not going to utterly destroy him. He made He made Abraham a promise of God. He says, you are almighty God. You've established these people for correction. You got to get the dross out. Get the dross out. You correct the people. You correct the people. Lord, have mercy so that your will can be done in the land. Listen at this 13th verse because this is part of the connection. I just like what was there before it. Thou art of purer eyes than to behold evil, and canst not look on iniquity. Wherefore thou lookest upon them that deal treacherously. Now, one minute he's saying they you're using them for judgment, but it's like treacherous. It's like they they're being treacherous. We've seen in the scripture when God uses a nation and they go above board. <sighs> it often look like God to use another nation to deal with his people. And sometimes that nation has a chance to become uh, uh, knowledgeable of the Lord. Don't you know that about Nebuchadnezzar when he had Daniel? 
And when I when we just look at this 13th verse here in Habakkuk, it doesn't mean God can't see wickedness. It's not something that he wants to look at as if it's okay. It's not a part of his wisdom. It's not a part of who he is. He said, don't be like this. Does it make sense? Come on, let's let's not let's not be silly when it comes to looking at the scripture. You don't want wickedness in your presence to persist. I hope I got them, I hope I made sense there. Listen, thou art of pure eyes and to behold evil, and canst not look on iniquity. Wherefore lookest thou upon them that deal treacherously and holdest thy tongue when the wicked devoureth the man that is more righteous than he? This is where we see part of Habakkuk's uh like how, how can you allow this to happen? Well, that's 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 really all I wanted to read from Habakkuk. I, I wanted to look at the part cut away into the eyes. He's 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 asking God some questions. Now again, remember I said God, He can see it. How do you think you if you can't see it, why would He judge it? Now I'm going back here to uh Second Kings twenty four. So the Lord allowed these nations to come in, pillage and destroy and um, create turmoil for the people who would um, be so foolish as to reject him. And now it, God is like, it is, it's time for me to show you. We saw in the, the uh, third verse, surely at the commandment of the Lord came this upon Judah to remove them out of his sight for the sins of Manasseh, according to all that he did. Let's go on down a little bit more. When I read, I say it's much like a, narr a narration. We're going to be reminded of some things that Manasseh did, right? I think I, I think it's the twenty-first chapter of Second uh, Kings. But let's let's be reminded here. Um, fourth verse, and also for the innocent blood that he that he shed, for he filled Jerusalem with innocent blood, which the Lord would not pardon. Now, the rest of the acts of Jehoiakim and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Judah? So we've talked about how Manasseh would kill some of the prophets. We've talked about how Manasseh uh, helped uh, influence the people to burn their children to the to in, in the Valley of Tophet and so forth. So these things, God's like the blood. Remember what um, when Cain killed uh, his brother, Abel, the Bible says it's like the blood is crying from the land. In other words, uh, why you th why you thought or think you're going to get away? God God sees this, and 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 uh, there has to be judgment. It's it's going to come. It's going to come. And so even though Manasseh, you know, he, he was he was not going to say restored. There there's some things that's got to be done. The people have been led too far. Well, let's see. Now we're at. Verse six. So Jehoiakim slept with his fathers, and Jehoiakim his son reigned in his stead. And the king of Egypt came not a, <laughs> and the king of Egypt came not again any more out of the land, for the king of Babylon had taken from the river of uh, the river of Egypt unto the Euphrates, all that pertained to the king of Egypt. Now, if you were to look at a map, um, say looking at um. Palestine or Israel, northern nation, Judah, the, the southern nation, and you start going westward, you're first going to see uh, Ammon and Moab, then you're going to see uh, across the Jordan, then you're going to start seeing, how can I say, a, a Syria sort of up north, and you're going on over into Mesopotamia, you're going to see the Euphrates River, you keep going on over, and I don't know the mile between this, I believe, I think it's the Tigris River, if, if I'm remembering correctly, that's a lot of land, um, if, if if I would just give a guess, I believe you, you're going to have maybe 500, 800 or so miles going uh, uh, eastward, but they're coming west. That's a lot of territory. And then he goes down into Egypt. That's a powerful man. And you know what? God is allowing it. Imagine, imagine, imagine if the people of God had been obedient. Listen to them. If you get nothing else out of this, yourself, Gary included. Just be obedient. The flesh were war against the will of God. 
Adam's mind, his flesh, warred against the will of God. Judah, Israel, warring against the will of God. So he let them be taken captive. He let another. He said, well, they hadn't been taken captive yet. Well, really? They paying, they paying tribute. Really? Other nations coming in. Really? Didn't God say, I'll fight for you? Didn't he say it? Didn't he say that your crops would yield? Didn't he say that your animals are going to like produce? Didn't he say that your women would not be barren? Did, did, didn't he say it? So what happens first within their hearts happens within their land, happens with the people that are over them, happens when they are taken physically captive. It will happen, saints. Let's be right with God. See, I mentioned in the beginning, what time is it? I mentioned in the beginning that Adam was taken captive or cast out. Does this not look the same? Don't it look the same? Because when when I said I want to try to get to at least the 15th verse, we're going to read about some, um, (laughs) how can I call it, VIPs (laughs) of the day, royalty that's going to be taken captive. And, he, and 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 Nebuchadnezzar, he's going to set up some people there. You take just do what you want to. Do we not know about the cherubim? We're seeing some of the same thing. Didn't we see in Matthew 23, Jesus was telling them, woe unto you, woe unto you, woe unto you. He was talking to the religious people who were supposed to know God. Rome is coming. Rome is coming. Rome is coming. And Jesus would tell them in the book of the Revelation, I will. Blow out, take away your candlestick. I didn't say it exactly right. See, depending on your uh, translation, that which you have known, just hang with me here, because there's applications and things that we can see in the scripture. As a land where my temple was, and there was a representation of my spirit in the Holy of Holies, you had my. You had my commandments and the Ark of the Covenant. Yes, you did. You had the rod, Aaron's rod. Yes, you did. That rod which which came back to life. Yes, you did. You had the manna, which was a symbol of the word of God coming down from on high. Yes, you did. And you let that temple, you, you, you didn't regard that temple. No, you didn't where my presence was supposed to be, where you're supposed to come as a, as a special people, obedient to me, where you could get things right there was what we call today yom kippur i don't know if it's uh, let's just say that one, once a year the high priest would come into the uh, holy of holies you threw it away so the nation comes in some of you gonna be taken captive oh but god is wonderful he is so wonderful because he told him i've been talking about jeremiah he said when you get over there into the land of captivity. You are to receive your judgment, but be faithful. Be faithful. Because after the 70 years, when the land finally receives its uh, its Sabbath, 70 years, he said, I'll bring you back. I want you to be faithful over there. I'll bring you back, but I'm going to deal with you because I need you to know who I am. You forgot who I am. You forgot that you said all that we have said, all that you have said we will do. Exodus 19. Here you left the text. Did I? Did I? Why is this happening? So maybe I'm not going word for word, but we teaching tonight. We teaching. Now, don't go back. Because God, he don't force us, but he'll deal with us. He was like, here, you're teaching an antiquated message that's found in the Old Testament. You better read Revelation again. You better read it. Now, um, anyway, let's go back. So, um, I see which what verse am I? I'm, at, I'm I'm going to the uh, seventh verse. And the king of Egypt came not again. That means Egypt understood his place. 
Nebuchadnezzar was more powerful than they. So he was like, we're not going to try to fight against you anymore. We read now of Jehoiakim in the eighth verse. Uh, and Jehoiakim was 18 years old when he began to reign. And he reigned in Jerusalem three months. And his mother's name was Nehushta, the daughter of um, Elnathan El of Jerusalem. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. Oh, my gosh. According to all that his fathers had done, is this what the scriptures would say about us, y'all? If it is, there need to be a change. Oh, he's going to deal with us. Listen. And at the time, the servants of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came up against Jerusalem, and the city was besieged. Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came against the city, and his servants uh, did besiege it. Nebuchadnezzar's got some people who are under his charge. They've traversed lands to get here why not they want you know that <laughs> there used to be the song everybody wants to rule the world it's true and we do too we do too paul talks about this earthen vessel when we take it from the dirt we want to rule this dirt we want to use rule this plot we want to rule this land and if we could we would rule the world so I'm, it, it sounds like i'm stretching it but is it not the truth it's the truth. God wanted a blessed land. He wanted a blessed people. He wanted a blessed nation. He wanted a blessed city. The city was supposed to show forth his praises. Yeah. Nebuchadnezzar is uh, fully in charge. And this city, this people has been besieged. Didn't we read it in Habakkuk? Yes, we did. Now, Habakkuk is probably a little further or somewhere in this time frame and maybe even some beyond, listen, at the 12th verse. Jehoiakim, the king of Judah, went out to the king of Babylon. He and his mother and his servants and his princes and his officers. And the king of Babylon took him in the eighth year of his reign. There's something that's really interesting in here to me talks about Jehoiakim going out and it keeps saying his, his, his. It's not really his anymore. This, this Nebuchadnezzar's. So there's a semblance of ownership there. Okay, can I say something? I can. So follow me because it'll seem like I'm like going crazy. The true king was God in the first place. They messed it up with Samuel. Uh, I think that's around the 8th chapter of I think that's 1 Samuel. Around the 8th chapter of 1 Samuel. God was their king. So they go through, you know, on and on and on. God gives them a king, and then they have wicked kings, and then the Judah would have some good kings. And they, if the, if things could have been so much different had they been obedient. Now they're getting the, all these kings that would come and fight against them they didn't want. God's allowing this. Now, when you go to the book of Daniel and you see the Syrians' time is over, Babylon, Medes, and the Persians, and the, and the, and the, and the Greeks, and the Romans— God, all these nations come in. This is what this is what we're leading to. But it was because of their conduct. It was because of their conduct. I want to read just a little bit of their conduct. Can I do it? Yes, I can. Going to <sighs> Jeremiah seventh chapter. I'm going to not read it all. Jeremiah the seventh chapter. These people have been so influenced by wicked kings in their hearts, in their own hearts too. And uh, listen at this. I, I'm 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 just I'm just going to read a little bit. If I don't if I don't expound a lot, then I, then I don't. But you can hear hear this. Let me see what time it is. Okay. The chapter seven of Jeremiah. Again, why? Because Jeremiah was a prophet during this time frame. The word of the Lord came to Jeremiah from the the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying. Stand ye in the gate, this place of judgment of the Lord's house, and proclaim there this word, and say, Hear the word of the Lord, all ye Judah, that enter into these gates to worship the Lord. Remember I talked about how they abandoned that? Third verse. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, amend your ways. Excuse me. Amend your doings, and I will cause you to dwell in this place. This is God trying to reach out to them. <laughs> Listen, trust ye not in lying words, saying the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple 
of the Lord are these because they would go and frequent that temple. They felt that that took that erased anything that they were doing. But the, what we see in here is it's not true. God, uh, God abandons the temple. Do you understand? Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar is going to burn the city. He's going to destroy burn the temple he's going to take some of the gold he's going to take some of the silver all the riches that you had it couldn't save you all the priests that you had they couldn't save you what was the priest doing the priests had changed and they were not rightly dividing what god had told them to do they had the scriptures that had come before moses had told them yes he did they was pretending not they were pretending they don't trust any lying words from these priest listen i'm at the fifth verse for if thoroughly you amend your ways and your doings if you thoroughly execute judgment between a man and his neighbor if you oppress not the stranger the fatherless and the widow and shed not innocent blood did we just read about manasseh <sighs> okay i'm not gonna read all of this what we do in reading this uh in the same how can i say discussion of this this lesson we see that righteous judgment wasn't taking place. And so never not Nebuchadnezzar, but Jeremiah is trying to deal with it. He said, don't be deceived. God is not mocked. Evil communication. Evil, well, I don't want to say this. You, you, you saw it to yourself. Uh, damnation. You saw it to yourself. Problems here. Well, that's some of the conduct. And the people felt that they could get away with and in Jeremiah he was he was warning them he says he says you can repent and the good thing about it is, is they could have repented well <laughs> I'm coming back to Second Kings twenty four so where we were it was at the tenth and eleventh and twelfth verse Nebuchadnezzar's got his officials out there and they pretty much taken land you know looked like it almost looked like an accountant is coming to say okay you know when a place has been foreclosed and then the bank takes it or sees it it's kind of like well nebuchadnezzar's coming here this is mine this is mine this is mine and these are the people i'm sitting in charge i'm just kind of giving sort of an idea of how it is listen at what it says again in the 12th verse it says and jehoiakim the king of judah went out to the king of babylon sounds like he was forced to he his mother and his servants and the princes these these would be like his sons or what have you those who would um be in the royal court and his officers and the king of babylon took him in the eighth year of his reign so while we see that jehoiakim is called king it doesn't mean very much does it it doesn't see that's the problem satan would make us feel like we can rule but we're not jesus said if anybody sit at the door, I mean, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm somewhere around in John 10, right? He said, that, he says, I'm the good shepherd. I'm make, I'm making a connection. S Satan being like, he will keep you. He will give you. He tells Jesus in the fourth chapter of Matthew, I'll give all this to you. He can deceive you, make you feel like you're getting something and you're not. So Jesus will say, well, you got many shepherds out there. I'm the one. I'm the door. So it is, if you see a shepherd sitting at the door where the corral is and they just let anything in, no, the good shepherd will protect you. He tells you how to guard your heart. He tells you how to keep your mind because the world will show you so much. It'll look so good. It'll be shiny. Now, that serpent that we read about in the Bible, I think the word is Nahash, and it talks about a spiritual being who had, let's say, a, 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 a brightness about him, but the brightness was not the brightness of God. In a picture for you. It's just like I, 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 can't, I can't do without this. And, and you will. Because judgment day is coming. Can't we see this is like the day of the Lord? This is the day of the Lord. When the day of the Lord comes, you want to be on his side. You don't want to be on the opposite side of the day of the Lord. Who is on the Lord's side? Who is on the Lord's side? Because you will be either with him or you will be against him. And he is a warrior. He is a warrior and he fights. And you better stop listening to the seductive things that this world will tell you that all Jesus does is he loves. He loves his father. 
He says, I come to do the will of my father. He comes and the Bible says that his eyes are like a flame of fire. It says his feet are like burning brass. It says like his mouth is like a sword and he's going to cut. He's going to destroy. Why? Because he died. He died innocently. He became sin for us so that we could have power, so that we wouldn't continue in sin, so that we wouldn't make excuses. God made this world up. Right. And he said, this is how I want you to live. The grace of God has appeared to all men that that, that teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldliness, we should live soberly in this evil and wicked world. And God has not changed. But you could be taken captive. I could be taken captive. Walk away from this dead gum word and see what happens. Didn't you read Matthew 7? Didn't you read Matthew 7 and 13? I think it says something like this. I'm almost finished. Wide is the way that leads to destruction. And narrow is the way that leads unto life. I might be misquoting it. And it said, few there be that find it. Have you searched for it? He said, they're finding it. I didn't go back to the uh, let's say the Greek. I'm working with what the way the English says, but it find to find it to find it. If you're searching for excuses to live like you want to instead of like what God says, you better better check yourself. He's coming back. Look at the signs. He said, well, into a generation that look and discern the time, they look at the clouds and they look at the sky and they can see the color of it. I think it might say red and they can just tell what the weather's going to be like. But they won't look at the signs of the times to see how things are changing. Government taking over government. The gov- the, the, it's still happening. It's still happening. But see, when you're hid in Christ, regardless of what happens, you're hid in Christ. He conquered death, hell, and the grave. I think Corinthians 15 says, oh, death, oh, death, oh, death, oh, death, oh, death, where? It's just sting. No, we don't want to die a painful death. No, <laughs> that's natural. But he will give something, I believe, that will set the heart and mind to rest. But we got to ingest it. We got to take it so it becomes more of us, so that we become more in the word, the word in us. John, I think it's 17. Father, I have given them your words. All that you have told me, I've told them. Giving them what? Your word. Giving them what? The spirit of truth. Giving them what? Giving your correction. What? Giving them your wisdom. Giving them what? Your exaltation. Giving them what? Giving them your hope. I am in you. You are in me. They're in me. They're in us. Because I said, Lord, I'm enjoying it, y'all. <laughs> I am. And um, so Jehoiakim goes out there and he's got some people. And Nebuchadnezzar's like, I'm, I'll, I'll take you. I'll take you. <laughs> you have potential. <laughs> you have potential. <laughs> I'm going to take you back to Babylon because I'm a, I can work you, you know. I ain't got to be dumb. I ought to kill everybody. I can take you and you can, you can do what I say. You go, got some people going to learn my language. Yeah. But the, Daniel, listen, listen, listen. Daniel went and he was faithful. And he, he, he blessed that nation. When would, oh God, I said, Lord, help me, help me, help me. In my, in my fear, can I, can I be like that? Can I be like that? Let's, I said, I want to finish. Mm. Going back to this, uh, this, uh, going back, we're now going to the 13th verse. This is talking about Nebuchadnezzar. And he carried out thence all the treasures of the house of the Lord and the treasures of the king's house and cut in pieces all the vessels of gold, which Solomon, the king of Israel, had made in the temple of the Lord, as the Lord had said. It's interesting because didn't we read about a, somebody doing that? Um, I think it was uh, somewhere around the, the time of Hezekiah. The, the, I forget who Hezekiah's father was. That story just pardon me, but Lord, we've been going through a lot of kings. Hezekiah, I want, 
I don't think it's Jotham, but uh, it, anyway, Hezekiah's father was wicked. Uh, Ahab, I think it's Ahab. If I'm wrong, um, it's, it's someone can correct me. I'm thinking it's Ahab. Anyway, Ahab had done some wicked stuff, cutting up stuff and all that. Now look, they look. It's, it looked like a resemblance, don't it, between the one that was supposed to be of God. What, what is, is Ahab? In it, Ahaz. Thank you. Ahab is way back there with Jehoshaphat. See there. Thank you. Ahaz. I don't remember that. Ahaz. What has Zakiah? See how I'm gonna try to remember that, y'all. Anyway. <laughs> And he carried these precious things from the temple out. Next person, he carried away Jehoiakim to Babylon and the king's mother and the king's wives and his officers and his mighty and, and the mighty of the land. That's, that's the army, you know, or part of it. Those carried he into captivity from Jerusalem to Babylon. Well, when I said that the Lord would abandon the temple, the people it was the people's fault it was the king's fault right i think it's in um it's in second it, it's in one of the chronicles uh where god is um i think it's chronicles 15 i'm not gonna try to I'm, so let's say i was in one of the chronicles 15 and, and i think god is using jehu or, or hanana one of those prophets and he said the lord runs looking through the earth uh, running, his eyes go to, to and fro in the earth, looking for whom he can show him, himself strong. And it, let me put it in Gary's words, because when I'm quoting it, it ain't coming out right. God looking for some people who, through whom he can be mighty, and he wants to show himself through people. So if you can't continue to just do whatever you want to be wicked, you you can't be used like that. But you can you can be you can be rebuked and corrected. Well. Um, I'm going. I'm going to stop because it's, it's time. So you may not like that we stop like that, but um, the word of God is uh, is right, and it gives us. How can I say? It gives us the way to understand history. History that's yet to even happen. History that's going on now, gear. How can you say that? This is warfare. There's still a warfare, saints. There's still a warfare. Ephesians says that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, yet flesh and blood is what we will see. But there's actual demonic spirits. So you might think of demonic spirits and you might see, Sagir, you went from the top of it. No. Don't just think of the ugly or the contorted face, though there can be that. Think of the seductive. How sweet must have been the words that fell on Adam's ear when his wife said, baby, look at this. Eat. It's like his mind was erased. Can I say that? Well, look at all the years of blessing. And it looked like their mind was erased. So God deals with them. And he sent his prophet. And he sent his prophet. And he sent his prophet. Even to the time Jew, Jesus would say to the people, y'all kill the prophets. <laughs> yeah, you killed John the Baptist. Well, you're taken captive away. You can be taken. Uh, I mean, you can be carried away. You're taken captive. The, rem the remedy is to be to be in the word and the word in us to receive correction when necessary to be exalted to be to, to, to be to be in the word to be protected in God's love well I'm gonna stop right here uh there were some other verses that I had but I, I think I think we're fine God gave me some other verses as we was talking and um I would say the thought is to continue on um, and probably I would, I'm thinking right now going into chapter 25 as stopping at verse 15 there are five more verses and then chapter 25 so um, thank you Lord for your word thank you for your patient but let's not 
Help us not to take it for granted. You deserve our allegiance. You're worthy of honor and glory. We're going through different things in our lives. Uh, some sometimes different phases in this physical world affects us. Help us to be lifted up in you. Help us to be lifted up in you that we understand the truest reality of being in your presence. Help us to grow where we're weak as that you build us up. Help us to love you more than anything else. Correct us when we're wrong, Lord. In your loving kindness, we ask, don't destroy us, Lord. Help us to turn. Help us to remain. Help us to draw close, to mature. We ask these things in your son Jesus' name, amen. We are going to be open for um, discussion if there's going to be any uh I hope that um, it had, co I hope it cohered, even though it may not have cohered <laughs> that well. No. Anyway. Anyone tonight? Well, I wanted to read <laughs> from the north. Jeremiah, come on, I mean, huh? Jeremiah, he talks about out of the north. And uh, you see these nations and lots that seem to come from the north. They might come over and come down or whatever. But anyway, um, yeah. Um, I agree. Yes. When you said we teaching tonight, we yes. teaching tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so strong. It's like okay, I don't know what you're doing, but you better pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> that was really good. I I loved it when you went to Jeremiah and Habakkuk. But it was good because you showed the patience that God had had with his people mm -hmm. and the attention he had paid to them because you don't send a prophet unless, you pay, unless you're paying attention. And that attention that he lavished on that nation by sending those prophets and saying, hey, you know, straighten up, straighten up. I'm watching, I'm watching. And it's and how that can be misinterpreted, how the nation misinterpreted that grace, because it was truly grace. And to say, you're out of line. We have a covenant. You're moving out of the way of the covenant. You're going far from it. I want to bring you back and to remind you of that covenant to remind you of the deal you made and said, hey, I'm going to be this and this and this, and if I don't do this, this, and this, then you know that I'm going to do this, this, and this. It was already written. He didn't bring anything new on them. He's not uh, capricious, like I'm going to make up something mm -hmm. now because I don't like what you're doing. No, it was already written, and you made a covenant on that. And so it's, to, it's how to, the misinterpretation of grace. When someone is sent, when you see a prophet come, and they tell you that you're out of line, and how don't you see that this is the love of God? Mm -hmm. You misinterpreted it as, okay, I don't like the messenger okay, this is mean, okay, this is not positive. And in that 
you deny the power. That they, um, that's what you have a form form of godliness, but you're denying the power. Mm-hmm. And the power is just not to destroy you. Yeah, that's that's paramount because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Mm-hmm. But you don't understand that other part is that it's a change, the power to change you, to power to make you different. And that's the power you have to accept, and that is his grace, that I'm saying I'm trying to change you. I'm trying to make you what is good on the earth. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to make you what is righteous on the earth. I'm trying to give you my image. I mean, in its truest form, you got a form of it, but you denying the power mm-hmm. of a changed life. And so you see that happening with them. And it just, when I read like verse, what was that? Verse three, where it mm-hmm. talked about Manasseh. Yeah. It, said it was done because he had shed innocent blood. And it's like, there was no pardon for that. Yeah. And so you think, how can one person, you know, I mean, if you're just reading that from there, yeah. how can a person do this? And he was dragged away, and he was brought back, and it looked like he was forgiven. Yeah. But all of this has come upon our nation. But it wasn't just that he did it. It's that he coerced everybody to go along with it. Mm-hmm. That you made it uh, official, that this is the way we serve. And this is the way we're going to do it. And so you project in there through the whole house of Judah. And so it's like, oh, wow. Were well, we paying for what he did? No, you participated. Mm-hmm. You actually participated. So, I mean, that's, just think about misinterpreting grace. You Sometimes we don't see it. We don't have a love for the truth. If you have a love for the truth, you can't misinterpret grace wow. because you understand that it's God talking. You understand what is what is being said is true. You can't misinterpret it, but that's what they did. You see grace. Uh, you see grace with uh, Noah. Noah found grace, mm-hmm. and he prepared an ark. Well, he didn't do it on his own. He heard that it, I'm gonna. It's going down. <laughs> you need to prepare yourself. Yeah. You, know? you need to prepare yourself in your house. You need to do this. And it said he preached. He was preaching grace to these people. Yeah. You can turn now. You you have time. Turn. But they misinterpreted the grace. They laughed at it. They like, oh how stupid he must be. Oh, we, you just seem ridiculous. We're so sick of him coming out here talking to us. Because it says he preached, what, like a hundred and how many years? A hundred and twenty? I don't remember. I know it was a long time. But it's like, how many? I don't think he went out there once. I think it's like, he tired of this dude and ain't nothing happening. And then you become a laughing stock. And now you irritate us. But you, they're, all the time they were misinterpreting grace. And they do it now in the church. They teach us, if you ain't dead yet, God, please with you. Oh, How is yeah, that? Yeah. You make him the minister of sin when you say that. That I'm, I'm, I'm just giving out sin tickets to everybody. <laughs> have at it. Oh, Lord. Come get on board. Have at it. Here's your sin ticket. I gave it to you. My blood on it. I got a bloody fingerprint on it. Take that. Have at it. No. That's what you do when you, you misinterpreting grace and you deny. It's about denial about who you really are. It's denying his power. It's denying his power to change. It's denying his power to destroy mm-hmm. in this life and the next. So 
I didn't get your title and I need to get your title. That's that's what I got from him and I thank you. <laughs> uh thank you. Um the title is You Can Be Carried Away. Uh and then uh colon cast out. Okay. You know, it, it's really something because when you look at that message, I, I, you say the sin ticket, it, it's like people came up with a few verses that they that they like and they emphasize those without context, without without mm -hmm. the the panoramic understanding of scripture and God's God's un what the Bible call immutability. And yes. It is, it's, it's so sad because it's really like a band-aid that you, well, you can keep doing it. And it, it, cause I pondered, I pondered that thing before. Right. And I'm like, it looked like some people, so-called ministers doing stuff and they got, and they got to feel okay. They, they can't keep doing it unless they feel okay with it. So they put that thing out there. And and yeah. and the and even sadder is when somebody who has studied a little bit of let's say the original language will do that, but you know you can choose different. Um, I guess you call it lem. I don't Tim have to correct me on this lemmas. Lemmas yeah. of a word, you know, entries of what the word means are. are and it's 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 really sad oh, because that's the gloss. That's the gloss. Okay, gloss. That gloss? I think the I lemma think might be the ending of the word and the gloss might be the def mm -hmm. the various definition. Yeah. It, and and it's like the house is on fire and people let, let's say you got a a house and on one side the fire is burning and it's spreading and on the other side you know you can't tell but the house is on fire. It's, it's and it's like scared. oh it's okay it's okay. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Many a people have burned up in their sleep. <laughs> That ain't funny, but it's true. <laughs> you know. that Thessalonians talk about the people being asleep. Oh. Yeah. Let me find that. I awake, un so. awake unto righteousness and something. I think it says something like that in Thessalonians. I like it when you say he doesn't force us, but he deals with us. Mm-hmm. Because it's like, um, I think we forget that he's watchful. You yeah. know, like, I don't know. It's like, I've, I was like, well, he's out of sight, out of mind. Mm -hmm. But he's always watching. And if you are you don't have that conscious in you that he's watching, you know, people, you know, protect their identity and do certain things and lock stuff down. And, mm -hmm. and I, you know, I, I put covers over my my uh, camera on my computer, okay. on oh, my yeah, phone, yeah. because, you know, I know there are eyes out there. Mm -hmm. And I know that these cameras have been used to spy on people and, to, you know, photograph them and to record them and to put their images out there for the world to see. And it's saying, if, if I don't see my God as being greater than that, and I want to, there ain't no cover for that. Mm -hmm. There's no cover I can put on myself. It's going to be insufficient. It's going to be too short. It ain't going to be wide enough. I can't hide. Mm -hmm. it's like if I make my bed in hell, he, he going to be there. Yeah. I can't hide from that. So if I don't have that sort of consciousness, I'm going to live like he's not living. I'm going to live like he can't see. Like those men that put the hole in the wall and they got, mm -hmm. they think they're going to go in a cave. You mm -hmm. think he can't see in there? That's my mountain. Yeah. You think I can't see in there? <laughs> say it again, Ed. Say it again. Say it again. <laughs> <laughs> That's my mountain, yeah. That's my mountain. You think I can't see through it? Oh, man. I see you. And it's like when he says, I see you, you can either take it as if, stop, I don't want you to see me. I don't care. Or you're going to break down and go to your knees and humble yourself. Because there are times we don't realize he does see us. Mm -hmm. And it's like, if you don't fix your heart, you have to fix your heart to be conscious of him always. That's true. That's true. 
in all of your doing. And it says, if if he was sitting right here right now, would I say that? Mm, good, good, good. You, <laughs> you know, if if he was, if he just came and lived with me, what would I be doing? I'll be doing Faye, but Faye, Faye all the time, though. Mm -hmm. But, you know, (laughs) you know, if you got company, you want to do a little extra, you want to make everything in place, you know, she's always like that, though. It's it's not that it's like, okay, company coming. I may do a little extra to make sure things are right, but she's always that way. Yes. And you can count on it. That (laughs) is that kind of consciousness. You can count on it. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. that kind of consciousness, you know, we should have yeah. with him, with the most high. That he's yeah. present. He's in our midst. Yeah. And if he's in our heart, we should always be conscious of it. So let the words of my mouth and the meditation yeah. of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Mm-hmm. So I don't know what Tim is gonna say, but I know it's gonna be so good. Wow, I heard I heard that song. You done learned you done learned that song. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he taught it well. <laughs> I guess you don't have anything to say. You say you say what did you what did you just say? It didn't sound. I said right. I guess he doesn't have anything to say. He didn't oh. say anything. He he liked to come. He kind of liked to come in like um on his own terms. It seemed You're like so why you put the captain's words in your mouth like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the truth. Did you hear the sweet wisdom of Gary? <laughs> <laughs> Let not let let not your hope let your heart be troubled or frightened. <laughs> I mean that thing with all my heart. You know, there's some people that will be taken away and they don't know it. Some people are already taken away and don't know it. Yeah. Some people are taken away. See, Samson was taken away. He didn't know it. That's true. He was take he was taken away from the source of power and did not know it. He said, I'm gonna get up and shake myself. I'm gonna shake like I'm shaking at the strip club. I'm gonna shake myself. I'm gonna shake my buck. I'm gonna shake my long hair. And God gonna, gonna make your it. way. <laughs> and, and then you got up. And you shook, and you found out you've been took. Boy, but that's what's going to happen to some people. A lot of them. You're going to be taken. And you notice that they are taken away before they know it. The book of Deuteronomy says explicitly and without equivocation that this couldn't happen unless your Lord had sold you. Mm-hmm. You were sold before they got there. But when you start teaching Jeremiah so prettily, we're going to see that Jeremiah is going to tell them somebody's coming from the north. Yeah. This is before he gets there. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming to take me away. 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 He's coming to take me away. And so what ends up happening so many times, people are taken away, and right while they're in the midst, and they're sitting there stunned, and damnation is coming on them. Damnation is coming on them so hard to tear their tail and sunder, to put them to the place where they can never get up and repent because the rebelliousness of their hard heart has made it that way. And I try my best with God's help, and his strength to help people go to hell and get worse judgment than they would if I had to open my mouth. And at the same time, I try to make it where a person can be freed from that. 
I don't believe that God's word is neutral when he said it's going to accomplish what he sent it to do. Therefore, mm -hmm. I don't know what he's sending it to do when I do it, other than make people accountable. The prophets came to those people B times. Then when the B times come, you ought, if you see a whole lot of bees keep coming to you, giving you God's word, you ought to be, you ought to be nervous. The prophets came B times rising early. And what did those sap suckers do? They mocked the prophets until there was no what, Andrina? Remedy. I don't know when that I don't know when that time is coming to person's life. It could be the day when they hear that they're devilish. I don't know. I don't know. I just know that it's scary to play with the God that dispossesses people. That will tell people you were in covenant with me. But you can become my enemy. The preachers might not want to tell you that, but but the Lord's brother said it, and he called them adulterers and adulteresses. And he just asked them, "Don't you know their friendship with the world will make you the enemy of God?" We don't seem to care. But then the captivity comes. You get bound into something you can't get free from. You end, you end up serving something you don't want to serve. You lose your privilege and the benefits that was once yours. And somebody else get to enjoy your benefits. And you get to die. <laughs> Glory to God. So if we don't pay attention and we don't hold fast that which we have, like it said in the book of the Revelation, we can end up losing what we have and realize it. Sometimes it's already lost and we don't know it. Sometimes people's heart has already turned cold. It's already waxed so cold. I'm talking about this thing can be as cold as ice and the person still not even willing to sacrifice. It's one thing to be cold as ice and try to sacrifice anyway. But there's that other person, I ain't even got to go through the motion. Because this is me, this is just the way I am. This is just the way I see it. I just feel that the stuff that you preach tonight is the difference between people learning what the Word of God is and sticking with what they've heard. The Word of God does not, it does not play with us. He doesn't need us. We got too big of a grandiose idea of who we are. And and that need, we need to be disabused of that folly. That's all I got to say on that, Gary. I, you, you, you preached. You put the warning out there. And if folk want to inherit death and hell, you're free. I can I can see why Paul talked like he did. I have not shown to give you the whole counsel of God. So those people coming at Paul, you ain't going to tell me this temple thing. This See, evidently, I've never said this before, but it's so beautiful. You all, you all, you all got your pencil, your crayon, your lipstick. Your... When you really look at it, the rituals of the law were easy. Yeah. It was when Andrina said, when when Mutt Oliver talking about you need to wear this hat or you need to wear this dress in order to be accepted in this church, she said that's easy. Y'all yep. got whole y'all got whores in here that get the babies out of wet lot. And been holy all their life. Well, y'all, well, y'all say some somebody scared they're not gonna be able to have a child. So that 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 means God's word is null and void. As long as this person feel like I just want to make have a baby anyway, instead of God can be, we don't need one. Mm -hmm. 
And then, but every time you were able to, I ain't gonna say every time, but so many times you still able to get pregnant. So what, 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 what's the point? But I'm just saying, we looking, and we don't realize where we stand as a people. We in bad shape, and so when we talk about the law, the righteousness of the law, and all of that, that was the easy. You. That, didn't David say it? Lord, if you just wanted uh, a yep. sacrifice, I, I could do that. It would be so easy. Man, it would be so good. Because Saul went and did it. Mm-hmm. He said it would be easy. A sacrifice? And this is what we, and that's why I say when we talk about the law, people get upset when you talk about the law. Do they really know what they're saying? Really, that's the easy part. To offer an animal. To offer an animal will be so much easier than doing mm-hmm. what's right. An animal. That's easy. That is going to be so easy to just offer an animal sacrifice instead of offering your heart, instead of letting your heart be right with God. Just a sacrifice. We could just do that. We'll be fine. So I I believe with all my heart. That's the point that we're gonna. That's the point that we as people miss, and we don't understand. We think we're doing right by God. We're not. We ain't even close. Again, why do I say that? I say that for this reason. We can do the rich. It would have been easy to do the ritual, to offer the sacrifices, and 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 be lost like they were. They were lost. They were, just like Gary said. They had already lost it all. They were gone, and they didn't even realize it. How many of us are in the same boat? We already gone. One thing they need to do is play the song. You know, get away. Mm-hmm. Let the dead bury the dead. We still churching. We still every. We still everything we want to be. And God can't have nothing. Who is He to want something from me? You don't know me like that. Well, anyway, that's all I want to say. That's the state that many people are in today. They're in that same state, lost, and don't even know it. With that, I'm going to let Tim shut his mouth. What? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> that was good, Tim. You, you made me think, though, when you talked about the law and the difference in, in, in offering a sacrifice. Because really, in a sense, it's not really denying yourself. It's following a procedure mm-hmm. to be declared to be okay with God. And it's not really, you, there's no self-denial in it. You don't, you know, it, you don't have to really give up any, any of your behavior. All you have to do is give up a sacrifice. Mm-hmm. And so I thought about when, um, Jesus was talking and he talked about if you're going to follow me, you have to do one thing first, deny yourself. You have to deny you. Take up your cross and follow me. These are actions that he he topped it off and said, your work's going to follow you. Your works are going to follow you. He's going to know whether they were wrought in him or wrought in yourself. Mm. Like if you were trying to do something to make yourself look better or Mm. you were trying to, you know, bring forth fruit, meat for repentance and Mm. true, true repentance. So that you, you got to deny yourself and, and offering a sacrifice didn't always, it didn't always require that. It's Mm. like just, I'm going to be compliant. Okay. But if you and if you're wealthy, it's no big deal. Nothing. Yes. 
Yeah. So that's like if you, if you don't deny you, I mean, like you big as the enemy because this is about you changing. This is a, this is not about me uh, eating. What I'm gonna drink the blood of bulls and goats? I don't mm. want that. Who am I? If I was hungry, I wouldn't even tell you. That's right. That's right. Well, you couldn't feed me well because you can't even really feed yourself. I'm feeding you, Negro. I almost said the real word. (laughs) (laughs) And he walked away because he had great possession. That's right. And you right, the world will trick you. Yep. Well, like like right now, they gave they gave your um, friend Kanye, they gave him uh, um, Texas is, it, it, it zip status. I don't know if it was today or this week, but um, so now he got Texas zip status. I don't know how I don't know how quick that was uh, in comparison to other people, but they gave it to him. In other words, you know, you please somebody. The puppet master. Get it. Every now and then you say something that has wisdom flowing from your lips. You know, and that's true because I always talk about people being like being Geppetto. <laughs> and it's like, uh, they all want to pull your strings. You're not a real boy. You're not a real woman. In the the words of the great Josiah, am I big? No. (laughs) You got to put your pedals on, and you're like, they puppet masters. And you're these little Pinocchios. They're handling you. Yeah. Taking you where you went, where they want to be. That they project upon you because it's all about projection, and yep. it's I it's it's so it's like CGI. It's like if you it's not real. It's only real when you actually do it. Okay, mm-hmm. so if we say, oh, you know, you should listen to Taylor Swift. Oh, she has fabulous music. <sighs> and everybody be playing her music on every station. And her videos are showing every hour on an hour. And see, none of this is real, okay? Mm-hmm. It becomes real when you begin to watch, when you begin to buy, mm-hmm. when you begin to go to the concert. It's all a projection. This is this is how wickedness is. Mm-hmm. It has to be projected first. Just like the Catholic Church, the Catholic Church had absolutely no authority over the people in the United States of America. But what we're going to do is we're going to project like we have power. And we're going to we're gonna worship on Sunday. Sunday is the day to worship. Well, how did that get to be uniform? We got to be uniform because, hey, we said it and you did it. You gave over the power. Okay, so we're going to say we're going to celebrate Christmas and Easter. Mm. Well, how did that happen? Well, we projected it, and guess what? You did it. We advertised it. We did propaganda for it, and you did it. You gave it power. By the prophet Charles Dickens. It was a so Christmas. When people think the entertainment... House. When people think entertainment is entertainment, it is not. It is all forms of propaganda. Mm -hmm. This is how they war against our minds and we don't even know it. This is how we don't care. It's like we have apathy. Well, you know, somebody got killed. Well, people get killed. Well, you know, because you watch somebody be killed a hundred times on movies. Well, you know, they went over there and took somebody land where they happen all the time. It causes you not to be engaged with the truth. Mm-hmm. The truth is, it's some real wickedness in this world. It's so true. 
it and it teaches you don't you don't pray about it. You just say, Hey, that's just what happened. <clears throat> you don't cry out. You say, Hey, that's just what happened. You know, it teaches you not to be engaged with God. Because you're constantly being said things. Constantly, constantly. And they mean to bombard your soul, your eyes, and your ears. Mm -hmm. And what they do on Trump, we will bombard you till every one of you are enough people all hate him. And then what we can do, we can push our L B Q T R E E E and we can everything else and we can get rid of the the, the Negroes. Tired of them. Don't they know we've lit three people up? That's enough. We didn't have to do that. And you know, good and well, ain't no reason in the world Al Sharp should have the power that he has and make the money that he make unless he's an agent. Agents get paid, okay? Yep. God tried to make us agents. Said, no, I don't want to be an agent. I want to be. I want to be the athlete. You know, you the agent for God. You are not God. You supposed to be working for Him. You don't know how to agent. A, a good agent gets. He gets his reward. Anyway. I'm I'm through talking. I, I'm 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 tired of church folk. I'm tired of you all. Just don't know how bad it is with church folk. If it were not that the Lord wanted us to do for church folk, I let them go. They're like, Lord, you help me get to where I'm fine. I'm good. But it's like, dang, they want you to say what they want you to say, and it's like I can't do that and be real. Mm -hmm. I'd rather not say anything. Only way I do what you all want me to do is I'm gonna make suckers out of you because I see how big a sucker you are. You all really want to feel good. You want to be wearing a size 28 dress. And girl, you look like you got down to a 16. Mm. Man, girl, you you doing it? You, you, girl, you making those things sing? <laughs> And then they get all happy and stuff. That's what folk want. Like I told Ann, it's the show. The better sometimes a, a woman to get, the more she keeps her hair done. Like you can't see that belly. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I ain't kidding. Same thing with men. They, they keep their hair cut. And then sometimes they'll go get a car. It, you know, a little fast racing car, something they call it a muscle car. You, it ain't, you don't have no, look, you don't have no muscle to be showing a development of masculinity, Quayton. But you got that car, and that car supposed to make you young again. It doesn't. You still have to squeeze out. You still have to barely get out. And when you get out, you can't walk that fast. All of you pulling in front of people on the road. <laughs> Weaving in and out of traffic, but I saw you from my van, and I say, I bet he don't walk like that when he out walking. I bet you not jumping in and out in front of people. Bet he leaning up against the doggone counter like he got a third leg, like his upper torso is a third leg. Like we need to, we need to start paying attention. We ain't all of that to God. I know He mindful of us, but we stupid. Let me really stop before I, because I can feel a preach coming up just out of my throat. <laughs> I can feel it. I can feel a preach. <laughs> well, uh, I, I'm grateful for all the comments, and um, we just really need to just be mindful of what the scripture says, and. Um, Lord willing, we will um, continue on with this. Uh, how can I say? Uh, hopefully next, hopefully next Tuesday or whenever we speak again. It seemed weird because I hadn't, I hadn't spoken in a while. I was like, 
it was weird. I was like, I don't, I don't like that. But you know, we got to speak again tonight. So, y'all, let's keep praying for one another.